Hello everybody! Today I thought I would go over how to save tomato seeds. We try and save as many seeds we can here at Rolling Hills Farm just because as you save them the plants become more adapted to your climate and so if you save those seeds every year they get more and more adapted to your climate. Um, so we're really careful about how close together we put the plants. There's different specifications for each type of plant. So like we plant usually five or six tomato varieties and thankfully we have four gardens that are plenty far apart and even within some of the gardens are so big we can keep them far enough apart. It's um, at least 25 feet for tomatoes. We try and go even a little bit further. Tomatoes are self-pollinating. The wind helps them too but they're considered self-pollinating. So I've gone through. These are black vernissage tomatoes and I have just cut them down and you can see how I've cut them right through the middle. There's the top and the bottom and I just cut them right through the other way and is all you do is just just squeeze this out and you can still eat this part. We're gonna put it in some soup and you just squeeze it all out and it's really good. You want to have multiple plants that you save from so you have the greatest amount of di uh, excuse me, genetic diversity if you're just doing a few plants it's kind of like they get inbred so the greatest number of plants you can use that is the best so you just keep until you have all that you need well, I've got a lot here we really like these and these are some giant cherry tomatoes but they're still very sweet and they're just I think they're beautiful you can kind of see the the striping in them. The people um, in our CSA really enjoyed them and they just were really good producers. They produced a lot of fruit like most um, cherry tomatoes. You want to be careful. This one I had picked and it wasn't quite ripe so I'm not going to actually use that one but I thought I would just show it to you because if the fruit isn't all the way ripe your seed won't be all the way mature. So make sure that you just use ripe tomatoes or whatever seed you might be saving. You want to make sure that the fruit is ripe. We just keep going and going. This is now it's kind of a stinky process. This part of course doesn't stink but once you are done adding all the seeds in and I don't know if I'll do this all on camera because I got a lot here you are going to add <coughs> excuse me some water to it so this one I did some bison tomatoes already and I add some water to it maybe like about half again as much as whatever you had so you have a half an inch add a half an inch of water and then is what you're going to do is you're going to let it sit out on the counter or preferably if you have a place that stays you know still warm but isn't in your house that's actually a better place because it's going to sit out and it's going to kind of get rotten it'll grow mold on the top like a white mold and that is what's happening is the tomatoes are fermenting so you can see well I don't know maybe you could see here there's kind of like this little gelatinous case around the tomato seeds and if you ferment them, that gets rid of that. So you ferment them, that breaks that down. And so all you have to do after that is you can kind of take off the mold. It usually comes off in like a sheet pretty much. It's, and it's stinky. So really, if you can like put it in a closet somewhere or... I don't know, in the basement, you still, you don't want it to be too cold because the warmth will help their fermentation process. But take it somewhere. And I know this looks kind of green, but that is, these tomatoes are ripe. That's just part of this kind of variety of tomato. That's just how it is. So anyways, it'll get moldy and you take that off and then you add water and you're going to spin it and you're going to spin the water around and all the good seeds will go to the bottom that are um, fully mature healthy seeds will go to the bottom the ones that are 
didn't get fertilized they'll and all the extra tomato stuff will rise up to the top and then you can pour that out into the drain and so I just do that a couple of times until I've got all the gunk out and then um, just drain the water you could pour it through a sieve or something or I just usually drain the water and then I pour it back in the bowl and there might be a little bit of water in there but I just let it dry out and I have actually here that I some that I did earlier these are some other black vernissage tomatoes. So some people say that you can just put them out on a paper towel and not worry about the fermentation process, which you can, but then they're all stuck to the towel and they're kind of gunky, which is fine, it'll still grow, but I just like mine to be a little cleaner than that. So we just go ahead and do the fermentation process. It only takes a couple of days. We can put ours down in the basement and so we don't have to smell it too much. Now we also did, um, we, I just was working on peppers earlier. But one thing I want to remind you before I get off the topic of tomatoes is that you could see that there was all kinds of seeds here on my cutting board and I'm sure there's some on my knife here. Yeah. So you want to make sure that you get this all rinsed off before you do another variety because you don't want to mix your seeds because then they'll be planted and they'll be mixed um, next year they'll be mixed, they'll cross-pollinate, and you won't have a true variety anymore. It'll be a cross. And so, um, and this is the awesome, I love this tomato knife. This is when we bought it. Um, the guys, like, they call this a tomato knife. I mean, it wasn't, like, the official name or anything, but we knew right away why it was called a tomato knife. We had been using, like, some serrated steak knives for our tomatoes, and we found this, and it's... It just cuts them so perfectly, just so nice. And it's Rader, R-A-D-A-R, -A is the brand of knife, and they have a lifetime warranty on it. So if you ever come across these, then if you get Azure Standard, I know they sell them. We actually bought them at a show, but um, I did see that they sell them there. If you get that, or you can go to Rader.com, I think, and, and maybe find them there. Google them. But that is how you do tomatoes. I'll try and see if I can <clears throat> remember to videotape the part with all the rotten stuff and how to get that off. So I have a few more varieties to go here. So I'm going to get back to that. But I hope that you guys enjoyed this and that helps you to become more self-sufficient and just to be able to grow plants that are more accustomed to your climate. Have a good day. We'll talk to you later.